The Securities and Exchange Commission SEC, what is it? An independent federal government regulatory body, the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission SEC, is in charge of safeguarding investors, ensuring the fair and orderly operation of the securities markets, and promoting capital creation. It served as the nation's first federal securities market regulator after being established by Congress in 1934. The SEC encourages complete public disclosure, defends investors from dishonest and market-manipulating techniques, and keeps an eye on corporate takeover activities in the country. Also, it permits bookrunner registration declarations among underwriting companies. Typically, in order to sell securities to investors, issuance of securities issued in interstate commerce, through mail, or online must first be registered with the SEC. To conduct business, financial services organizations including broker-dealers, advisory companies, and asset managers are required to register with the SEC. As an illustration, they would be in charge of approving any official Bitcoin exchange. What is the SEC's process? The main responsibility of the SEC is to regulate entities and people involved in the securities markets, such as stock exchanges, brokerage houses, dealers, investment advisors, and investment funds. The SEC encourages fair dealing, the disclosure and dissemination of market-related information, and protection against fraud through established securities laws and regulations. With its Electronic Data Gathering, Analysis, and Retrieval Database, or EDGAR, it offers investors access to registration statements, periodic financial reports, and other securities documents. Five commissioners, including one who serves as chair, are selected by the president to lead the SEC. The five-year terms of each commissioner are renewable for a further 18 months if a replacement is not found. At the time this video was filmed, Gary Gensler, who assumed leadership of the SEC on April 17, 2021, was the SEC chair. The statute stipulates that no more than three of the five commissioners may belong to the same political party in order to foster nonpartisanship. There are 23 offices and five divisions within the SEC. Its objectives include interpreting securities laws, carrying out enforcement actions, issuing new regulations, supervising securities institutions, and coordinating regulation among various levels of government. The five divisions' respective duties are as follows. Division of Corporate Finance ensures that investors are given relevant information, information pertinent to a company's financial outlook or stock price, to enable them to make knowledgeable investment decisions. The Division of Enforcement is in responsibility of upholding SEC regulations by conducting investigations, bringing legal action, and conducting administrative hearings. Regulates federally registered investment advisors, variable insurance products, and investment firms under the jurisdiction of the Division of Investment Management. Integrates economics and data analytics with the SEC's primary purpose through the Division of Economic and Risk Analysis. Sets and upholds norms for fair, orderly, and effective markets under the direction of the Division of Trade and Markets. Only civil lawsuits may be filed by the SEC in federal court or in front of an administrative judge. The Department of Justice's law enforcement agencies are responsible for handling criminal prosecutions, although the SEC frequently collaborates closely with them to provide evidence and support legal procedures. The SEC pursues two primary penalties in civil actions. Orders known as injunctions that forbid further offenses. A person or business that disobeys an injunction might be fined or put in jail for contempt. Civil monetary fines and the return of illicit gains. In some circumstances, the SEC may also ask a judge to impose a ban or suspension on a person's ability to serve as an officer or director of a corporation. A variety of administrative processes, which are heard by internal officers and the commission, may also be brought by the SEC. Typical legal actions include issuance of cease and desist letters, revocation or suspension of registration, and the imposition of bans or employment suspensions. The SEC also acts as the initial level of appeal for measures requested by self-regulatory bodies of the securities sector, such FINRA or the New York Stock Exchange. The Office of the Whistleblower is one of the SEC's offices that stands out as one of the most effective tools for enforcing securities laws. The SEC's Whistleblower Program, which was established as a result of the Dodd-Frank Wall Street Reform and Consumer Protection Act of 2010, rewards qualified individuals with monetary sanctions exceeding $1 million for disclosing original information that results in successful law enforcement actions. 10% to 30% of the total money collected through the sanctions might go to the people. Background of the SEC 
securities issued by various corporations went worthless when the American stock market collapsed in October 1929. Public confidence in the integrity of the securities markets plummeted as a result of many having previously given inaccurate or misleading information. The Securities Act of 1933 and the Securities Exchange Act of 1934, which established the SEC, were passed by Congress in an effort to regain public faith. The SEC's main responsibilities were to make sure that firms disclosed accurate information about their operations and that brokers, dealers, and exchanges handled investors fairly. Since then, other legislation have helped the SEC in its work. The 1939 Trust Indenture Act. 1940 Investment Company Act. The 1940 Investment Advisors Act. 2002 Sarbanes-Oxley Act. Dodd-Frank Jumpstart Our Business Startups, Jobs, Act of 2012. Wall Street Reform and Consumer Protection Act of 2010. Every year, the SEC files a large number of civil enforcement cases against companies and people who violate securities laws. Every significant case of financial malfeasance involves it, either directly or in collaboration with the Justice Department. The SEC often prosecutes accounting fraud, the transmission of false or misleading information, and insider trading. During the Great Recession of 2008, the SEC played a key role in bringing legal action against the financial firms responsible for the catastrophe and giving investors billions of dollars back. It levied charges against 204 businesses or people in all, and it obtained close to $4 billion in fines, disgorgement, and other financial relief. For instance, Goldman Sachs paid $550 million, the highest fine ever for a Wall Street company and the second largest in SEC history, only surpassed by WorldCom's $750 million payment. Yet, despite the fact that virtually all of the brokers and top management engaged in the crisis were never found guilty of serious crime, many commentators have blamed the SEC for not doing enough to assist in prosecuting them. No one Wall Street executive has been imprisoned thus far for crisis-related crimes. The remainder either consented to financial penalties or administrative sanctions. How does the SEC develop new regulations? A concept release precedes a proposal for creating a new SEC regulation. A concept release and ensuing proposal are both made available for public evaluation and feedback. While deciding what to do next, the SEC takes the public's feedback on the plan into account. The SEC will then meet to evaluate suggestions from the general public as well as advice from business or other subject matter experts. The regulation is then approved by a vote. Are the SEC and FINRA the same? No. The SEC is a federal agency that establishes guidelines for the creation, promotion, and exchange of securities. The SEC is also responsible for safeguarding investors. Broker-dealers are regulated by the non-profit self-regulatory industry body FINRA, previously NASD, which also grants securities professionals licenses. Who is responsible for the SEC? A non-partisan five-member commission made up of the chairman and four commissioners, who are chosen by the president and approved by the U.S. Senate, leads the SEC, an independent federal agency. As it is governed by federal statutes such as the Securities Act of 1933, Securities Exchange Act of 1934, Investment Company Act of 1940, Investment Advisors Act of 1940, and the Sarbanes-Oxley Act of 2002, Sarbanes-Oxley Act, among others, the SEC is answerable to Congress.